For the next few minutes, I will talk about structural modelling in Roxar's RMS and how this can improve your workflow. This is a recording of the presentation initially presented on the Roxar stand for the 2009 EAGE and AAPG. You will no doubt be aware of geomodelling companies talking about their modelling solutions and how fast and simple they are. Why is this so important? Why is speed such a critical issue? Well, it's often because building the structural framework is a bottleneck in the reservoir modelling process. Getting the structure right takes time, but this can have a negative impact on a project's timeline, creating pressure to simplify the model. Do you want to be caught in a modelling bottleneck? No, of course not. So speed is very important, but shouldn't accuracy be paramount? Simplifying the structure may have a negative impact, but this is often something that is overlooked or accepted as the way things have to be. What's more important, doing it right or doing it fast? How about both? With the technology available in Roxar's RMS system, you can meet your deadlines without sacrificing accuracy. Let's take a look at some of the common structures that often cause problems in model building. Y faults, an antithetic synthetic pair of faults are very common. They can come in all sorts of combinations, such as nested Y or Y on Y faults as shown here. Lambda faults are upside down Y faults, where the truncation is at the top instead of the bottom, and sometimes a fault can make both a Y and a lambda truncation. Unconformities can also be difficult to include correctly, as they can not only truncate horizons, but may also truncate faults. So, how have these been handled traditionally? One popular method of fault modelling is called pillar gridding, where the fault surfaces are represented by straight lines or straight line segments. Intersecting faults must often share common pillars, which can distort the shape of the fault surfaces. Y faults must be designated as special cases, and often can make only one termination. As you can see here, the truncations are not correct. The orange fault should truncate against both the green and tan faults, but it doesn't. The double truncation problem is worse. The red fault should truncate against both the tan and the pink fault, but it doesn't. These fault models do not honour the real structure. It may be fast to create them, but what use is getting the wrong answer quickly? Sometimes simple structures aren't that simple to build, but they should be. So how should this work, and how can Roxanne help you? First, the fault modelling is fast and easy, but also honours the input data and your interpretation. As you can see here, the orange fault now truncates correctly against both the green and tan faults, and in the more difficult case of the combined Y and lambda fault, you can now see that the purple fault also makes the correct truncations. OK, so now we have the correct model, but how hard is it to do, and is it still the bottleneck? If we take a look at the fault modelling job, you will see how easy it is and there is no bottleneck. We're going to use 46 faults in this model and have a variety of input data that we want to honour. We've chosen to smooth the faults because of the noise in the input data and have defined the tip lines of the faults as slightly larger than the input data. I have just run this model live and as you can see, the fault model can be produced in just seconds. Trimming the faults to make an accurately connected fault model is just as fast and easy. The automatic tool works very quickly and the results can always be modified manually. With this patented technology, models with tens, hundreds or even thousands of faults can be created and QC'd in far less time than before, with much better results. Well, the fault modelling was certainly fast, easy and accurate. What about creating horizons? 
As you can see here, the stratigraphy in this model is fairly complex. We have several horizons that are based on seismic interpretation, and in between, there are many horizons for which we have only well-picked and isochore surfaces. There is an unconformity at the top of the section, which not only truncates the lower horizons, but also truncates the faults. We are able to set up all of this in one calculation. If the isochores don't add up to the total thickness between seismic horizons, they will automatically be adjusted to fit, while still honouring the well picks. And as you can see at the top of the window, calculating all of these horizons, adjusting the isochores, and truncating correctly against the fault and with the unconformity takes only a few minutes. The result of the calculation is a model that honours all of the input data and displays the results correctly. In this display, the unconformity has eroded many of the underlying layers, and the result is not a series of merged horizons, but a correctly truncated model. What you're looking at is essentially a subcrop map. As we remove layers, you can see how the unconformity has cut through the various layers and how precisely the horizons intersect the faults. This was all done in one step. And if we display just one of the zones, you can see that the zone is truly truncated and does not form a ghost or zero thickness layer in the truncated area. The complexity of the model is best seen by looking at a cross section. Here you can see that we have several Y faults, Y on Y faults, Lambda faults and more. Note that the faults come up to the unconformity but are then truncated and there is no offset in the unconformity itself. The horizon modelling is indeed fast and easy, but the proof of the accuracy is how well it matches the input data, specifically the wells. Here, we have cut the model along a well bore, and we have displayed the zone log of the well along with the model. The black line at the right of the zone log is the exact well bore location, and as we zoom in, you can see just how well the model matches the well picks. So once again, RMS is able to provide you with fast and easy, and more importantly, accurate horizon modeling. But of course, this is not the final step. In order to continue with the reservoir modeling, and ultimately to get the model into the hands of the engineer, we have to be able to make a grid that captures all of the structural complexity. Because this model is going to be used by the reservoir engineers, we have chosen to make this as regular as possible. The grid is regularized in the X and Y direction, and all the faults are stair-step faults. Because it only takes a few seconds to generate this grid, if we don't like it, we can always change parameters and create another one. You can clearly see the results of the unconformity in the grid here. Of course, you don't have to make all the faults stair-stepped. You can make any selection of them pillar faults, as you can see in the lower figure. In the last few minutes, I have been able to show you that building a structural framework in RMS is fast and easy, and it's also accurate. The cycle time to produce models can be decreased by an order of magnitude, going from years to months for extremely complex models or more typically, from months down to days. The process is easy to learn and easy to use. The workflow is simple and streamlined, but gives you the power to create models as complex as the real world. And all of this is done without sacrificing accuracy. All of the complexity that you see in the subsurface can be represented in the model, which of course means that you have more confidence in this model. If you have any questions about what you've seen here or similar, please email us on rms2009 at roxar.com or visit our website www.roxar.com forward slash rms2009 where you can find more information and videos of other RMS features and functionality.